Hello everyone, welcome back to another review, uh, a new review today for a new film, unlike the other video that was also posted right before this. Um, I decided when uh, uploading the videos um, that I'm going to try and upload one at 8am and the other at 8.30 so they come back to back together. Uh, this one will be the 8.30 one so you get the original Space Jam review and now you get the new Space Jam review. Not just new, Space Jam A New Legacy starring... Uh, the, the Lon J, the Lon James, the Bron James, King James, as referred to it. Look at this little, my, little McDonald's toy right here. You need to move the basketball bag, please. I'm not really, I'm not really angry about the movie. I don't know why. <laughs> I got fucking aggressive with the toy. Um. Uh, clearly, I, I, I like the the merch of this movie. I really wanted a jersey and the shoes, but those are super expensive, and I believe both have already sold out in both ways. Uh, maybe if I, I can find a Goon Squad jersey, those look cool too. I like to hang one on my wall. But this is my, uh, my, my Space Jam, my Space Jam shirt, uh, Toon Squad. Who's on it? Uh, I haven't even looked. Sylvester, Daffy Duck, Bugs Bunny, Wild E. Coyote, and Tasmanian Devil, who probably has one of the funniest jokes and a cameo when he first shows up. Uh, cameo of other people. Uh, we'll get into that in the spoiler review when I talk about a lot of stuff. Also got the hat. Space Jam New Legacy hat. This isn't a <laughs> fucking merch thing for it. I just have a lot of merch for some reason from this movie because I find it to be appealing merch. Uh, it's a comfy shirt and that's a nice hat. <laughs> and this is a great McDonald's toy, am I right? Um, so Space Jam A New Legacy is coming out 25 years after the original film, Space Jam, 1996, Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny, you know it, you love it, if you're a 90s kid, you might even love it if even if you're not, because, like, just, it's kind of been a nostalgic cult thing that's held up in the modern day, surprisingly enough, and Warner Brothers decided, fuck it, let's, let's make another Space Jam, we'll get a new basketball star, I think literally, like, five years, five or six years ago, before this movie even went to production and was talked about, I believe everyone was just saying, like, if it's going to be anyone, it should be either LeBron James or, like, Kobe Bryant. Um, this is six years ago, reminding you. I remember hearing, like, those were the big names. Like, the big name people you know were the big name people that were discussed for the film. And, uh, tragically, Kobe Bryant uh, passed away uh, last year. And, uh, early last year. Um, I, I don't think they filmed it, obviously, at that time last year. I remember they, I'm pretty sure they filmed A New Legacy sometime in 2019, would be my guess, just saying, because COVID was last year, and I don't think they were filming it during that time. In fact, I think it was supposed to come out that year, and it just has now come out in July of 2021. Um, and honestly, I, ha I have to admit, I've been worried about this film heavily. The marketing and the trailers and the clips online have been the most annoying, cringy pieces of fucking shit I've seen. Like, I was actually looking more forward to, at a point, going to see Boss Baby 2, which was also a surprise, might I add, uh, just to point out that that one was a surprise, uh, as well as, like, Peter Rabbit 2 and shit like that, those have been, like, surprises, so, like, maybe I thought this one could surprise me, but with the marketing, I was like, probably not, this looks, like, fucking terrible, all the jokes are terrible, are weird, it's clearly just a marketing gimmick for other films at a point, fucking Porky Pig raps for, like, no goddamn reason, I just, the Matrix scene online, I was like, dude, just all these clips are fucking... Their nightmare fuel. It's purely nightmare fuel of how bad it looked. And I, I went into it like, you know what? Like, a few weeks ago, like a week or two ago, I started hyping myself up for it. I was like, you know what? Maybe they're releasing, like, the worst shit online. Because re early reviews were coming out from, like, uh, pe people got it early. I believe, like, Britain got it early. Uh, maybe China did or something. I don't know. I believe a few places were getting it early. And I saw reactions online saying, like, you know, it's, like, okay, it's fun, like, it's just as fun as the original, and there's some, like, great cameos and little gags that, that will work, and I'm like, well, that's cool, and I'm just hearing LeBron was at least better than Michael Jordan, um, which, without even establishing it, like, I saw LeBron in Trainwreck, and I was like, I can just tell from the trailer, like, he doesn't look good, but he looks definitely better than my Michael Jordan does in that movie, at least he doesn't look like he wants to kill himself constantly when on screen, interacting with fake animated characters that are around him, <laughs> LeBron looks like he has something in mind of a goal, uh, this man right here, um, and honestly speaking, I'm gonna keep him here the whole review, fuck it, <laughs> and, uh, honestly speaking, uh, LeBron, like, did a fairly good job, I felt, uh, uh, he was, he was a quite great King James himself, 
he did a good job in comparison to uh, uh, Michael Jordan, and um, that doesn't mean he did a good job logically. Like, if you're being legitimate, he did a fucking bad job. He's not a great actor, but as a non-trained actor basketball player, and he's carrying a dumb basketball film with Looney Tunes and shit, like, he's not that bad. I think a fair average audience of kids and adults are gonna go like, he's fine. I mean, they may like LeBron James, they might not, but they'll probably just go like, yeah, he's here, he's fine, he's definitely better than MJ. I'm not saying he's a better basketball player, he's still the GOAT, but, you know, like, it's just me. <laughs> I did watch a lot of basketball in, like, 2014-ish, so, you know, kind of have some love for LeBron James in a way. Uh, 2012 to, like, 2015 was, like, maybe the years I really was into basketball. Um, overall, he gives a solid performance. Overall, the story here, believe it or not, as much as it's a fucking ridiculous story that when you go see it will make you go, what the fuck? <laughs> what is happening with fucking Don Cheadle? It was like an algorithm in the goddamn Warner Brothers system controlling everything. It was like a mental breakdown when LeBron James says he doesn't like his idea. And he's like, mm, LeBron James doesn't like my idea. My idea is fucking genius. I'm supposed to be Don Cheeto beating up LeBron James. That's what that represented. Um, and seriously speaking, it's such a ridiculous story. LeBron James' son you know, wants to be a game, like a, a coding, like a gamer. He wants to make video games. And he wants them to learn basketball. Uh, they're not played by his actual children, by the way. I mean, I kind of figured that early on. But I thought it would be funny if they did. <laughs> actually, were actually played by his children. And, like, his wife. That'd be cool. I, I would just like to see that. But, you know, we got actors. It's fine. Um, and his son wants to be, like, a, a game creator. He wants to create games. But he wants them to play basketball. He wants them to push his limits on that. Because that's what he was told to do when he was younger. And uh, that was, like, a fun aspect to deal with, because LeBron, you could watch this movie and kind of be like, well, LeBron as a dad is kind of a fucking dick. He's, like, really aggressive, because that's what he's been taught to do. And I think that that's a fun concept to play with, and it actually does, weirdly enough, fit into the story, <laughs> as well as all these cameos. Unlike Ready Player One, where they're kind of just there because they're in a video game world to throw them at your face. Unlike, like, a property, like, uh... I'm trying to think of one. Um, not like a Lego movie. Lego movie does it very well as well, and it makes fun of it. Maybe it's just Ready Player One, I'm thinking. <laughs> a movie that just throws nostalgia and shit you've heard of at your face constantly. And while that movie is a decent, fun watch, I suppose, it, it it is a mess overall, and it does feel unnecessary, like the shit's just there to be there. Here, weirdly enough, it fits in with the story in some ways. Like, the fact that the Looney Tunes have left the Bugs Bunny on Toon World to go explore the serververse because Don Cheeto was like you guys should all split up like there's way more cool shit around here you know that and it like it makes it's supposed to make like these movies that people watch online bigger because you're like oh well now Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner are in Mad Max and uh Granny and fucking Speedy Gonzalez are in the Matrix and stuff like that which make for some fun gags the other than the Matrix one I thought that the all the other ones were like kind of funny to see for like a few seconds here and there there are some great cameos and I guess I'll start getting into spoilers a little bit so, spoilers from this eight-minute beyond point. Um, Rick and Morty uh, had a cameo that was, like, really funny, actually. He's your problem now, dum -dum. It wasn't just that they showed up. When they showed up, I was like, okay, I had heard a rumor they might be in it, but I thought it would be, like, a background thing. Like, I've been hearing everyone's background characters. Like, no, they're genuinely in it, and they have, like, a funny little joke about, like, the Tasmanian devil. They're like, we're trying to experiment him, and take away, like, all his symptoms of being, like, this crazy fucking beast, but we couldn't, even I couldn't figure it out, and Morty was like, I'm scarred, help me, Rick, <laughs> and they were like, alright, yeah, you guys can just fucking have a bye, dipshits, <laughs> obviously it's a kid's film, so he has to be like, later, dum-dums, <laughs> it was a little cheesy hearing, like, dum-dums, I wish, you know what, I, I was thinking to myself this whole movie, like, why didn't they push for a PG-13, like, it would still get kids to go, but it'd be interesting to, like, have some swear words or have, like, maybe something more there of an impact. It, it's weird. But, like, there just felt like there was moments where they were like, shit, we really should use that PG-13. There's, like, a censored... When Don Cheadle swears, but they, like, censor it out. And then they have, like, Rick and Morty show up, but, it, like, you know, they have to say dum-dums. But I heard hell and ass, like, multiple times in the movie. I'm like, they could just push it a little further. Like, look, the audience who's going to this, I'm sure, like, fucking six-year-old babies are gonna like it, but... The main audience who's going to want this are like 13 to 15 year olds who are into basketball, Dash Looney Tunes, or adults who have nostalgia for the original. Like, that seems like who mostly is going to go see the movie. So I am curious they didn't make a PG-13. I actually do believe that would be a benefit to this film. 
Uh, it wasn't a big mistake. It just feels like it might have been. Okay, real quickly, on the subject of cameos, I also forgot to mention that Michael B. Jordan, not Michael Jordan, has a funny cameo where the confusion is that he is not Michael Jordan. They think they have Michael Jordan, but it ends up being Michael B. Jordan. I thought that that was a funny concept of a joke. I've had that joke in my head for, like, years. I've, gotten, I've actually, like, confused their names before. Not because the people, but just the names are, like, you just kind of fuck them up, like, on accident. So I've done that before. Um, cute little gag with that. So now back to the real video. Overall, I'm, like, thinking of how I would say I thought about this film as a whole. As a whole, it's kind of a mess. It's a bit too long. Its story is still stupid. <laughs> Michael, um, uh, not Michael Jordan, uh, LeBron James uh, is still, he can't necessarily carry a movie yet. Not that he's terrible, I just didn't think he could carry a feature film on, like, his own path. Like, he's the main guy of the movie. I can't say he could carry it on his own. Um, he does an okay job, I would say, but I, he definitely isn't, like, the charming actor. Like, he was good in Trainwreck as, like, a small role, but he's definitely not, like, the charming actor that that has so much charisma. He's not even at, like, The Rock or John Cena level. Not even that John Cena's great, but he's not even at that level. If he could be at a John Cena level, I think I'd be giving him, like, yeah, props. He actually, like, kind of does ignite the film to, like, something better. Um, and, and there's just certain things about it that I, that I, I, I sat back and thought, like, ah, there's so many fun moments that are legitimately funny and, and cool to see. And there's so many that are so unintentional where I'm laughing at the film and I'm like, this is kind of shitty and kind of really dumb. A Don Cheadle, by the way, is the villain algae rhythm. You could tell he's having fun and he actually does a good job. He's like very over the top villain is person. He's kind of like a, a bitchy kids movie villain, but like he's, he's fun to watch and it works. Uh, same for the kid who plays uh, LeBron James' son. I thought he was actually okay. In terms of performances, from the main actors, those two are probably the actual best actors, which should say a lot. Unless you're considering voice actors, like obviously the people who play Daffy and Bugs, they don't sound 100% how you would like if you're a fan of the originals or other cartoons of people who played them. Um, but they're, they're like fine. They work with, you know, what they got. They're, they're, they're good uh, there. Um, it's 30 minutes. The first 30 minutes are, I don't even think he gets to the tune roll till around the 30 minute mark because it feels like it was actually a bit of a build up. And it's cool to see like, LeBron actually developing a story with his son, and this does set up an arc that actually really enough fits into the story. Believe it or not, the video game his son's creating fits into the story fairly well. All these characters and IPs, despite clearly still being a goddamn marketing scheme for Warner Brothers, just so they can be like, look at all the shit we have. Like, it's clear that that's what this film is mainly for, to make money off of um, and cash in on. But even with all that, it still feels fairly like impressively done like it actually feels like it is pushing the narrative to have that in here and clearly like they're hypocritical about it like lebron in a scene is like you know athletes in fucking movies like that just never goes well like hey, they're not good actors we're athletes he mentions that at one point they make fun of the fact of like the original kind of at times they uh, reference it um they talk about how they try to convince him like hey we can put you in all these movies and uh, later on, he goes, like, I just would never do that. That's not something you'd see me. And then later on, as soon as he gets to the tune world, like, a bit later, because the, the fucking algorithm or algae rhythm played by Don Cheadle just pushes him into the tune world, and then they go explore their movies and shit to build his basketball team. And he's hoping to build it off, like, King Kong, Superman, like, big people who could just, like, fuck shit up, is what he assumes. And um, that ends up not being the case. He ends up getting the Looney Tunes. Uh, that's pretty fair from the trailer, and it's obvious as it's going through the movie. It's also predictable. Like, you can predict this movie 100%, like, all the way through and through. It's not going to be some confusing narrative. Like, kids are going to get it, you're going to get it. It's it's fairly simple shit to understand. And I, I had fun with it. It's kind of like a garbage. It's like a garbage film that's clearly just a marketing scheme for Warner Brothers filled with cringy kid humor and, like, little Looney Tunes gags that some hit, some don't. But it's like a fun watch. Like, I found myself sitting in the theater like, that was an hour and 50 minutes. And it does feel probably about that long. But at the same time, I was like, never bored. Like, honestly, at least this film has more style and weirdness and shit to it than a film like Black Widow or like uh, other fucking generic films I've seen. Black Widow wasn't bad, but it was just the most generic average film I've seen from like Marvel like ever. And it was a fun watch, but like, you know, it's like there. 
it, like it is weird. I feel like I've been getting a lot of six out of ten films recently, like Mortal Kombat, uh, Black Widow, Spiral films that overall I'm like I'm watching. And I'm like I don't know how to feel like if I liked it or didn't. I feel like these are just all average films. For me, Space Jam: A New Legacy was like probably on the level of what an average film should be a six out of ten, five out of ten movie. But I had like fun. Like I was watching like an eight out of ten movie. I feel like I was watching a really entertaining film that I constantly was enthralled to be watching. Like, I would go back and watch this again, possibly, because it's a fun kids' movie, and I, I do like I mean, my kids' movies at times. And visually, it looks appealing, and it goes by quick, in, in my mind. And I'm a huge Looney Tunes fan, at least stuff like the main Looney Tunes, and I, I like LeBron for the most part. Like, I could see myself watching it again for, like, these little bits. I'm not saying it's going to hold up in the future. I'm not saying it's, like, a masterpiece or a film I could highly rewatch, but I had fun with it. I talked about the first movie. I was like, I have fun with that one. That one goes by way quicker. And overall, I would say that this film is probably a better movie and probably a more actual narrative that makes more sense. And I can tell LeBron's a better actor than Michael Jordan. Um, although I will say again, this movie is a bit long and still a predictable, messy story with a bunch of cringe humor that you could expect. And it is hypocritical on itself, just being the fact that they make fun of how many properties they have, but they're still showing them. There's still a reason that that shit's there. There's a reason Rick and Morty is there, because it's Adult Swim, Warner Brothers. They're still trying to get you to get that HBO Max subscription, or, you know, like, subscribe to, like, an online thing to watch Rick and Morty. That shit's, like, real stuff you could do. And that's clear that that's all here. That's apparent, like, 100%. But I was never bored. I was never bored in that theater. I was, like either laughing intentionally or unintentionally, and I like the animation and look of it, so I just felt like it was a fun watch. I don't know, like, really how much to say about it. Like, I don't feel like I, I can, like, shit on this movie. I feel like if I do, I just sound like a brat, like, yeah, cringe humor and porky pig rapping was fucking stupid. Like, it was. That was, like, a terrible scene, I'm not gonna lie. But it didn't, like, ruin the whole movie for me to be like, when Porky Pig rapped, I'm gonna give it a 1 out of 10 now, fucking Porky Pig's bars. He called himself lit. This pig is lit. That line made me give it a 0. I was gonna give it a 10 until that. <laughs> like, nothing like that's gonna throw it off. I'm sure a kid... I heard people, like, directly behind us who were clearly, like, adult women laughing at that, like, that bit. Like, they were like, <laughs> that was actually funny. And LeBron was like, uh in the background dancing and shit, and they were, I saw them laugh, I heard them laughing at that, like, like, people are gonna enjoy their shit, like, that scene was awful, the Matrix scene was awful, there's a few other gags that are awful, <laughs> but there's moments that are just so weird, and some that are actually creative, when Marvin the Martian shows up, I, I thought this was a funny gag, his, like, fucking ship opens up, and then there's, like, 20 fucking doors that open to, like, get to the inside of the ship, and then you see, like, some, one of them, like, a metal bar door, and you see it just explode, and that one opens, like, two more open, and then the main door literally, like, goes forward, and it has a rocket attached to it, and the fucking main door just flies away. <laughs> like, that was funny to me. Like, his door also has rockets on it. Like, I thought that was a funny little gag. It just felt like a classic Looney Tunes gag of, like, look at all this weird shit that just keeps happening. And that was funny. Oh, there was also, like, his gun, and it was a ray gun, and one of them was, like, Charles Ray. <laughs> I thought that was a good little gag. Like, there's just moments here and there that are funny that clearly animators and people who wrote in little bits into the film found funny uh, even lebron has like a few funny moments to interact with like he's like robin and he's like absolutely just being behind everyone whenever they're first showing all those scenes of them going through movies lebron is always the guy who's just like i don't want to fucking be here i'm just like here like why am i here <laughs> oh, i thought that was consistently funny he was like in the matrix he's like hi granny like you could just tell he's like I mean, I'm not getting the team I want. I'm just getting the fucking Looney Tunes back together. Because Bugs Bunny's plot, and weirdly enough, this was a funny plot element, and it did kind of work, was Bugs was missing his fram family and friends. He just didn't have them anymore. They all left Toon World. He felt like they portrayed their characters by going to other shit because Algae Rhythm told them to. And, and that was funny to watch like Bugs Bunny get drunk and have a sob story about how he misses them, him checking everyone off the list. They do hint, and, and I don't think this is important to everyone, but... I was curious if they would bring back, like, the romantic relationship between Lola and Bugs. Thankfully, it's not, like, there. But it is mentioned sometimes. Like, they do hint at their relationship. There are little elements where I'm like, clearly they're showing that that's a thing. And, um, the basketball game, complete nonsense. It's 
even the first one is kind of nonsense in a way too, but it's actually like they're still playing basketball, although they can crush people and beat the shot people. I mean, it's just not mentioned. Here, it's based on his son's video game, which is kind of this ridiculous oversight of just goofy, crazy shit you can do. And I'm sure it's like because it's from a 12 year old kid and the game is already kind of goofy. It's just an excuse for loony ish stuff to happen in the final act. It's also just an excuse for him to be like, son, I, your game was a good idea and it's great to have like LeBron emotionally connect with his son and, you know, obviously piss off Don Cheadle, which we get a giant CGI Don Cheadle later, which is creepy as fuck. <laughs> that element to me was funny, but. Um, again, Don Cheadle was fun in the movie, but that element was funny. Uh, I will say there's like, uh, this is a pointless thing to bring up, but a final mention, since I've gotten through, I've liked some of it, I still have fun with it, even if it's kind of a shitty film. Uh, um, in a way, I, uh, if there's a character, uh, Pete, was it P? Pete? It was like the little robot person that helped out, uh, Don Cheadle, Algae Rhythm. Um, I found that robot to be just constantly annoying. His gag was always just like, hmm, oh. Wow. Huh. Like, that was his gag, as he just had reactions to shit he said. He was like the, like the like sloth belts from the Croods movies, but, like, if he accomplished nothing and even had less funny jokes, I don't know. There's also moments, like, when the family comes to, like, try and find LeBron James, there's, like, one or two of them, and I'm like, if you cut these scenes out, it wouldn't have made a difference, and they're, like, two minutes long. There was a funny scene, although, with a guy who, like, was the executive, like, helping LeBron, like, like, oh, you should join this Warner Brothers thing. Like, he was the guy, like, showing him around, like, to Warner Brothers, too. He's, like, he's kind of, like, a, uh, a person who gets him around places. Uh, what, what would you call it? A manager type thing? I don't know what I'm trying to say. It, but he goes to, like, say, like, to the security guard, like, I lost LeBron James. You want me to look for him? The security guard's like, you lost LeBron James. You're a fucking idiot. Like, seriously, that's what you should be going to look for now. You should tell his wife that you've lost him. Like, why are you trying to hide it, you fucking idiot? <laughs> and he's like calling the wife and he's like oh you know what uh, I'm, I'm all losing service I'm at the Grand Canyon and the security guard was yelling at the wife on the phone like no he's lying he lost LeBron James your husband and he's not going to look for him and he goes, he's like a terrible executive you have to realize this and he's also bothering my per he's also like invading my personal space while I'm doing my job <laughs> I thought that, that the security guy was funny he probably got the biggest laughs from me the whole movie um, <laughs> overall it's film for marketing and fucking people to make money off of, such as LeBron and Warner Brothers. And with all that being said, that's fine. I mean, the shoes and shit look cool as hell. I would like to buy those, the new LeBron 19 shoes, you know what I'm saying. I thought they were going to be like 200 bucks, but whatever. They look cool as shit. So, do I recommend Space Jam A New Legacy to kids and adults and people who are nostalgic for the original? Why not? Like, I've seen reviews on here like... um but it's so shitty, and it's like an IP-based thing. Like, you knew that from the fucking trailer. Like, but at least it's fun, kind of, to me. I thought it went by, and it was fun. And people were shitting LeBron James' performance. Like, he is terrible in this film. Like, he's better than Michael Jordan. And, like, look, as I mentioned, like, I haven't heard anyone mention this interview. They're like, he was good in Trainwreck. I don't know why he just wasn't as good here. I'm like, it's because in Trainwreck, he's interacting with a very talented comedic actor like Bill Hader half the time. And he's given, like pre-consented like stuff on like how to act in those scenes the reason he's good is because he's playing lebron james simply not as this fictional character who has to interact with a ton of people and is like the lead of the film he is like the side character to a side character in train wreck that's why he works in that movie the reason he's not amazing here is he's the front lead the emotional lead the person we follow the story for like of course he's not going to be great like i mean like look this is a beauty like this is very very uh fucking awesome like he's so good here but look at him look at he's awesome here look at this it's incredible the the skills he has here look how fast i've never seen anyone go back and forth this fucking fast unlike lebron james the king of basketball the goat look at him <laughs> like he, he he's like he's great at that like but he's not an actor and that's even mentioned in the film so i, I just i don't see like where i can complain about the movie if i was entertained and laughing and even if it's a stupid film like the first one, then I feel like it accomplished its goal. I feel like it's the what I wanted to see from it. Like, I can totally get complaints. There are some really cringy moments, and a lot to technically hate. But I would come back and watch this, I'm just being honest. Like, I would see this again maybe once or twice in the near future. And if I'm getting the 4K soon, as I mentioned in my first year of Space Jam with the original, I'll probably get this on, like, Black Friday for, like, 10 bucks or 15 bucks on 4K when it's cheaper. And I would do a double feature. It could be fun. I'm a Looney Tunes fan. Like, 
what can I say? <laughs> and I still kind of like basketball, and I enjoy LeBron James. Like, whatever. Like, this isn't a special film. You're not going to watch this because it's an amazing film. You're going to watch this because you just want a simple, fun time, or your kids want an outing this fucking weekend. Like, that's just it. It's so, for me, I'm going to give it a slightly better review than I gave the first, and I'm really enough going to give it the same review I gave Black Widow, but I would probably decrease my Black Widow score a teensy bit to the... Uh, I'll, I'll get to that when I finally do a spoiler review, which will happen at some point in the near future. I just don't know when. A lot coming up <laughs> soon. Um, I'd give this a six and a half. Out of I, I don't think that there's much to say other than I would give it a six and a half out of ten. It's a fun film. A simple, fun, garbage-filled film. And yet, it entertained me. I was not bored. I had fun with my friends. Even though it seemed... I think I liked it maybe the most. Maybe one of my other friends liked it more than me. But it seemed like most of them were kind of fucking really hating it and calling it terrible. And, and to be fair, like, I don't even blame them for it. Like, it's technically terrible. But it was just a fun watch. It's, it's simple as that. If I can get some fun moments out of it that I'm not going to be calling it a piece of shit. Like, it was fine. Um, th that's my review. I it may feel like flubber and just a ton of filler shit for me to say, but, like, I, how do I review this film? I just had fun, and I like to talk about the film again. It would be cool to do an Easter egg video, but I don't do that type of shit. Uh, like, I mean, I would do a video with a ton of editing. I'm working on a few now, but that's just, like, an Easter egg video. It's not my type of thing. Um, look up them, though, because I'm sure there's, like, a thousand Easter eggs you could find, and I bet someone's done a video on it by now. Since it's been on HBO Max for already, like, 24 hours near... Like, yeah, 24 hours now. Um, um, fun, fun film. Um, and I'm gonna make a second segment, um, to this video in a second. Alright, I'm back, uh, really quickly for a second segment of the video. Uh, this is just a quick, like, little reminder. I'm gonna get my wisdom, uh, teeth removed next Wednesday. So, in context of when this video drops, that would be... In about four days. <laughs> I'm very nervous, but it's coming. And that's going to stop me from movies next week. So, reviews for Old and Snake Eyes. I believe those are the two ones only that are big coming out. I think there might be a third one. Joe Bell, I think, with Mark Wahlberg. That would be the other one. Um, those three, I'll get to seeing them at some point. Uh, definitely Snake Eyes and Old. Maybe I'll see Joe Bell at home at some point. But uh, don't expect those reviews till at least... The 28th. After this video, and then two more videos I'll have coming out after this, Escape Room 2 and Pig reviews, I'm going to be taking at least a, a week break. Because recording videos and that much, while being tired and in pain, and oh, I've heard you can talk, but like, you definitely want to make a video talking, it would be pretty fucking distracting and weird. Uh, I'll definitely hold off on that to a point. And I do want to review those films and see them still. Like, I do want to see Snake Eyes and Old, whether bad or good, for a point. Um, but just don't expect reviews for them at least until a week ahead. And, um, I would definitely say that week of the 28th, which is a Wednesday, um, right, it would be the 20th, yeah, 28th, which is a Wednesday, that third, the 30th, new movies come out, uh, Jungle Cruise, I think, The Green Knight, some other stuff. That week, I'll be back to normal reviews, doing them consistently, it's just a week gap because of the wisdom tooth removal and, uh, uh, work and other stuff happening, so, you know. Just, 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 uh, this is all uh, I wanted to put as a second segment to the video, just to let people know in this review, if they even cared about an old or a Snake Eyes review, that's when they would be, uh, a little bit weak delayed. Um, uh, which is cool, so, after this video, stay tuned for Escape Room 2 review, and a review for Nicolas Cage's new movie, Pig, uh, which I cannot wait to talk about, and for y'all to see the video of. Um, and go back and check out my Space Jam 1996 review, if you just came to this one, uh, I think hearing my thoughts on that would uh, are fun. Uh, it's a dumb film as well, so check it out. I put a little bit of uh, editing and some stupid gags and that shit because why not? It was a classic film. Might as well <laughs> while I have the footage easily available. So yeah, that's it. Um, bye. The fuck am I doing? Shit sucks. <laughs> Well, that happened. Wow. For the that, that's all, folks. Yeah. Pump up the jam, got the world in my hand. Yeah.